What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Man, I hope quarantine has been as productive for y'all as it has been for me. Uh, I've got a lot of work done around my house, uh, but I, have, we, I didn't really slow down at work, but in this video, I'm going to show you what I've done to the reef tank. Luckily, I became good fishing buddies with one of the guys that works at the fish store, uh, my local fish store. He's an awesome guy. I actually just was out fishing with him yesterday and we caught some fish and we just, you know, he's been helping me out with the saltwater tank. I've been helping him out with, you know, catching some largemouth bass. So, anyways, today's video. I have a lot of corals in here. You can't really see them because a lot of them are young, but I'll show them to you up close, talk about them, and uh, I don't want to bore you with it. I just want to, you know, hit, hit stuff quick. You're probably thinking, where the heck are your fish at? Like your last video, you talked about all the fish you had in here. Oh, it's a sore subject. They're not dead. Not all. <laughs> that doesn't even sound. That's, that's hard to say. All the fish didn't die. I have a quarantine tank set up. I'll show you that in a second. So, uh, me being new to this hobby and setting up this 125 and just, you know, loving the fish. They're really cool. Just buying one every week, not quarantining, not examining. I just dumped a bunch of fish in there quick. Somewhere along the way, I got, I swear it was a combination of ick and marine velvet, which is, those are parasites if you don't know. And uh, it took a toll on me. At first, I tried to say, I'm just going to keep the fish healthy and I'm just going to live with ick in my tank. But then, one day, the clownfish, the two clowns, they just looked horrible. And it looked more like velvet uh, because it was like the or brook or I don't know I'm not a I'm not I'm new to all this uh, but they just they just bit the dust so then I was like this is serious some of the other fish looked really bad the flame angel had already died RP to Flavio the flame angel and you know I reacted at that point I took all the fish out and put them in a quarantine tank since then doing some copper treatment uh, and. I've lost a few during copper treatments because they were already sick and then you start hitting them with copper, they get stressed out. So, man, uh, if you're new out there, I'm not trying to scare you, but take your time in quarantine. I didn't uh, because I was stubborn and new to it and just really, I wasn't stubborn. I just didn't really know the importance of it. But once you buy uh, a lot of fish and then, and then they all start dropping like flies because you, you put one sick fish in there you'll quarantine for now on uh i lost the purple tang which that one hurt well they all hurt but like um, to my wallet that one that one kind of hurt but i've been focusing on my corals while i'm running a fishless cycle so fish will go back in this tank it is just for right now i'm going to work on my corals and then I'm going to have the fish in the quarantine tank. Out of the about, I think I had 10 fish in the tank when I made the last video. I now have five left, which is sad. I lost half of the fish to the parasite, but uh, it is what it is. Quarantine your fish. That's the moral of the story. I got 27 corals in here, and I got five more coming from my buddy tomorrow. Uh, he's helping me out with these things, and so that's a lot of my success is knowing and talking to people that have been in the hobby for years. So I thank him for that. Thank you, Tim. Okay, so one cool thing I have bought for, you know, fish keeping and just, I don't know, general photography and videography, whatever, is this. This is a macro lens. So it gets up close and personal on everything, and it looks super sharp and crisp. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be using this lens with this filter on it, this little yellow filter. And uh, the parasite took a toll in the main display tank, so that's why it's going fishless for a while to where the parasites will die out because they have no host. There's no fish in there uh, for 90 days. 90 days. You know how hard it is to not buy a fish or look at a fish in your display tank for 90 days? Well, it's the price you pay when you don't quarantine. So while humans are in quarantine, my fish are in quarantine as well. So, oh, uh, I don't know. It's just not fun so let's get to the corals which y'all want to see or what i'm going to show you i don't know if you want to see it but i'm going to show it to you anyways but i'm loving the tank it's looking good so far uh i ended up adding a neuro 5 over here as a power head 
to get some more flow. I have the off-brand Nero 5, the Amazon version over here. Uh, it's kind of cool to see the difference of like the the actual the the flowage, the word the flowage that they produce. The Nero 5 is a little more expensive. You get a phone app controllability or whatever you want to call that Bluetooth, and uh, yeah, it's it's actually worth that extra few bucks, I, I believe, because. And I'm not going to get into that, but I like the Nero 5. So, corals. Let's go. So, the tank's looking nice. I'm really impressed with it. We'll start off with Easy Coral. Here's GSP, Green Star Polyp. Grows awesome. Uh, got a Leather Coral. Not great with the varieties, but that's a torch. Love in, uh, Euphilia. Uh, torches are awesome. So, there's a Frog Spawn, another Euphilia looks really good a hammer that's not doing so hot uh, I, I don't know why another torch an endo green torch two-headed I love it blasto I'm still trying to learn these so this is a good refresher some sticks so this is a bird's nest uh, SPS coral so they're a little harder testing them out it's doing good more blastos I believe yeah it is uh, a Duncan coral, one of the first corals I ever got, really small. It's grown a good bit. A brain coral. Some Alveopora that's not doing so hot right now, but we'll see. A Lobo. It's cool the feeder tentacles come out. Some Galexia. I always forget the name of that one, but it's cool. Some more sticks that Tim gave me that. You know, they take a while to set in. I just got them. It's a, a taro tree or Kenya tree, whatever you want to call it. Easy, nice coral. Uh, Ganapora. It's just got put in there yesterday and looking pretty good so far. A huge Gorgonia. I mean, massive. Got it for a great price. Thank you, Greg, for that one. Some bounce mushrooms. Really cool pieces. Small bounce mushrooms. That, that was a sun kiss, and this is a biohazard. Uh, so nice little mushrooms lava mushrooms got a few on that rock there what else we got uh, a favia a lemon spicy lemon favia I think it is it's a really nice see those little tentacles popping out pretty cool uh, some clove polyps weird coloration I don't know why they're turning that color but it's pretty neat I'll have to see how it plays out some acans Tim's favorite he said you have to have an acan in your tank so, got one. Here's some Zoas. I love them. They're nice and easy. Uh, got a few little colonies there. And last but not least, a little stick in the back that Tim gave me to try out. So the tank's looking nice. The corals are doing well. But let's show y'all the fish and their quarantine setup for 90 days. Uh, so I uh, set up a 55-gallon that I had laying around and put a Fluval FX6 on it. And here it is. Okay, this is my quarantine tank. Right beside my paludarium, which the lights have already gone off on it. Uh, quarantine tank. Got a lot of biomedia, flower pots. Uh, so Billy the chalk bass, still still thriving. See him? Oops. Billy's thriving. He's very, I, I, Billy was shot at first, but look at him now. He's like coming up to the glass, like where's my food? He's a muncher for sure. Uh, in the back there, Melanorus Rass, uh, McQueen. M McQueen's still doing good. Uh, clearing the copper up completely right now. I've treated them for about a few weeks in copper, or copper mean, uh, Cooper mean, whatever you want to call it, this stuff. It, it cleared up it, so I'm going to let it still run the fishless cycle. If you don't know anything about that, I'm not going to get into it, but I'm doing a fishless main tank cycle to get rid of the egg. Uh, I got the, this guy actually. I had in this tank, which I'm currently trying to take down, the 29 gallon. So yeah, I have a lot of tanks, but now I'm totally focusing on the 125. This is just going to be my big quarantine tank that I already had before. So Billy, the chalk bass, Melanorus rass, yellow tang still making it. He hides in the little blocks there. I don't know if you can see him real well, but yellow tang is down there, kind of skinny. I don't want to get blame him as the culprit of bringing an ick, but I'm 95% sure it was him that brought in the ick to the tank. Y'all him in the video because I couldn't get a good video of him. 
I probably still won't be able. But I have a really long engineer goby, which is, he's in there. Can you see him? He's like an eel. So there he is. He's like an eel. See how he scoots backwards like that? That's so cool. There's his little head. But yeah, he's like a, a eel thing. <laughs> he's not gonna swim around very much. He's a, he's definitely a, uh, a chiller. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five fish left. Uh, lost the clowns. Lost the clowns. Lost the purple tang. Lost the flame angel. Lost the uh, yellow coarse wrasse. Lost the per the bicolor blenny. So I took the parasite took a toll in the main display tank. So that's why it's going fishless for a while to where the parasites will die out because they have no host. There's no fish in there. So it sucks that this happened to the fish. But one thing I want to leave you with is this cool toolbox that I actually converted into like a tank supply kit. So you got your fragging tools, your testing kits, a little bit of everything, some chemicals, you know, dosing and phytoplankton and reef dip some wipes for the glass because you know you got to keep that glass clean on the tank and on my cameras so those come in really nice and handy just some various you know attachments for the drills and bolts and screws and zip ties and wire management stuff and i don't know there's a lot of stuff in here so this is a cool little rollable thing. If you have multiple tanks, you could roll it around. You could put it nearby. Uh, I like that it rolls around. And here's just a view of kind of my setup while I sit here at my computer, while I'm, you know, editing these videos, what I get to look over and see, which is the beautiful reef tank. And I love how it's coming along. So let me know in the comments what you think, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And, you know, Make sure and leave comments if you have questions, critiques. I'm open to it. You know, I don't do everything right. I'm new to this. Uh, hopefully, I've done a few things right. So, uh, let me know what you like, what you don't like, what I need to work on. So, thanks, guys. Leave a like. Subscribe if you want to. And have a good day. Keep reefing. Or just, you know, if you're, you're not a reefer and you just enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching it, guys. See you later.